Game started. Pressure point from the U.S. Okay, what do I, what should I play here? Maybe um, D4. Played uh, E4, it looks like, the last couple times. Got some weird games. Okay, Knight F6. Looks like a normal D4 opening so far. Well, maybe we'll get a Nemzo Indian. Um, no, just a Queen's Gambit declined. Um, well, let's try this line. I normally play uh, E3 here, but uh, someone said I should try this, so I will. Um, okay, he just defends the knight, so if I take, he can take back with the knight. Sometimes you take so that he takes back with the queen, uh, with the theory, under the theory that the uh, <clears throat> the queen is not well posted on f6 and will have to move again. But uh, we'll see. Um, maybe I should have played e3 there. e3 is okay now that the bishop is outside the pawn chain. And uh, it is nice to be able to take back this uh, this pawn with one move. But at some point, uh, you can keep stalling, right? You can play moves like rook to uh, c1 and queen c2. But... Uh, at some point, you need to move the bishop, so I might as well do it now. Oh, and he didn't. He didn't automatically capture. Okay, this is starting to look like the uh, Tartikover Bondarevsky variation. Makaganov Tartikover TMB. Tartikover Makaganov Bondarevsky variation. So if I take, I can take with the knight, and I can get rid of the dark squared bishop. If he takes with the pawn, <clears throat> then that blocks in the bishop on um, b7, and so it's supposed to be favorable for white. So generally he wants to take with a piece, but right now the only piece he has to take with, well if he takes with the bishop I'll trade it off and I'll be happy with the bishop pair. If he takes with the knight, um, oh that's the problem. If he takes with the knight, I take his bishop, no, no that comes out okay. Mm hmm, and he takes back with the knight. It, it gives him an open diagonal for his bishop, but I, I get rid of the dark squared bishop, so I guess that's a reasonable trade-off. It's probably an okay position. Probably better to do that than take with the pawn. Well, he's thinking about it. Unless, uh, unless he got disconnected. <laughs> Let's see. I'll, I'll enter a command here just to make sure I'm still connected. Okay, I am. I am connected. He played knight takes, yeah. So if we pause to count, that was just a trade of pawns, right? So I can take his bishop off and he can take back with a knight and it's all okay. Or the queen, okay, and leaves his knight well posted. That looks good. Now if I play um, e4 here, kicking his knight, takes my knight, I take back with the pawn. Seems like I have a little more space. And I just have to be careful. Ah, oh, yeah, so he automatically undermines the uh, the center with this uh, c5 move. Uh, good. A good uh, decision, I think. I'm going to leave that there. If he pushes on to c4, that's not a problem. Um, maybe I want to play um, queen to e2 and then rook to d1, getting the rook over here on this uh, file that might get opened up or I might want to push on with um, d5 at some point and then lend some extra support to the e-pawn here. He can play knight to... Uh, he can play knight to f6 at some point to put more pressure on the e-pawn. Or I can exchange here. But anyway, my idea is to play the rooks here and here. Rooks on d1 and c1, because these are, look like the files that are likely to open up. I can also think about playing the bishop out along this diagonal, maybe. If, if it doesn't lose a pawn. Yeah, so rook here. So it looks like all our heavy pieces are lined up against each other. The queens are on the E file, the rooks on the D file, and the A file. Although this rook, yeah, I would like to reposition it. Now 
Maybe I should play bishop back to um, bishop back to c2. Bishop c2, queen d3, push this pawn and uh, mate <laughs> mate on h7. <laughs> it's a simple plan, but sometimes it works. Okay, so he he unblocks the d file so that his rook has a clear view of this square, and I'm gonna do the same thing, <laughs> but also with this ulterior motive of uh, ulterior motive of uh, queen d3. And uh, he can play his uh, knight. He can play his knight back to c6. Yeah, maybe that was his idea. It went from d7 to b8 to reorganize back to c6. And if I push on with d5, his knight has a good square on e5. If I play queen d3 now, pawn takes, pawn takes. And he's got knight here, knight to... Uh, Knight to b4. Actually, he has knight to b4 anyway. So let's start by playing a3. Stop knight b4 so that I can line up my queen and bishop on this battery without without being harassed by the knight. And the, um, <clears throat> the d-pawn appears adequately protected at the moment. Pawn takes, pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes, rook takes, rook takes. Yeah, I've got, I've got him matched there. And the knight has wandered away from the. Um, the knight has wandered away from the e pawn, so I'm not feeling any e pawn pressure. Interesting. He wants to uh, double. Let's um, kick kick the rook. When I play e5 now, I'm opening up the um, d5 square, but he doesn't have a piece that can go there immediately. And then I can play queen to d3 or queen to e4, and he is going to have to play f4 or f, rather f5 or g6. Which one is going to, which one is more likely? If he plays f Five, I can take on Passant. Still threatening the check here. So, but on e4 here, the queen is a bit of a target for the bishop. Let's just go queen d3. See where he goes. See how he defends. He goes that way. Okay, so I've created a few holes over here on this king side, so let's uh, move the queen over to the dark squares. So just uh, queen, <laughs> queen h6 and knight to g5 looks like a dangerous threat here. Yeah, so he covers it. So the immediate knight g5. He can kick it with a pawn move. Um, I could start out by playing h, h4, h5. Is that an idea here? Or I could try to get a piece to this square. How about knight? Let's start with the knight move, and if he kicks it, the knight can come back to um, e4 here. Knight back to e4 and then to uh, f6. Looks like a good a good reorganization for the knight. Okay. Um, oh, 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 I have have I left this under defended? He's got two pieces on it. I've got. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, because of the knight here. Because of my knight, I've left that under defended. Hmm. So rook takes, rook takes, queen takes, then he has queen takes, knight. Do I have any trick there? His, his bishop is a bit loose. Queen here attacking his bishop. He defends with the rook. Rook takes, rook takes. Is there, there also is maybe some kind of tempo move with my, uh, my knight. Knight here, check. 
Rook takes, rook takes, knight here check. Pawn takes or king moves. And then I take his rook. Or even queen takes. Yeah, I think I can do that. Check. So I've disrupted his pawns a little bit over here in the middle of the board or on the king side. I don't know if that's uh, worth a whole lot, but the material comes out even, so uh, I guess I'm okay. <clears throat> He's got still three pawns and two. Ah, he goes, he goes for the mate threat. <laughs> so that forces an exchange here. Uh, okay, this is probably going to be a very even position unless there's some trick. Let's see, there's no check because uh, he takes my queen, and uh, he is threatening to bait me. I can bring my queen here to defend, but that leaves his pawn hanging. So probably I have to trade queens here. And what have we got? Well, it's the same colored bishops, and um, I have a little more space in the center. He's going to develop his rook with a tempo here, right? Let's strike first. I'll develop my rook with a tempo instead. All my pawns are mostly on dark squares. Oh, he wants to trade bishops? I don't, I don't know if that's such a great idea. Let's see, if I go here, he can still attack my bishop. So let's drop back. Now I'm still not threatening to take his bishop because he has the, he has the, the mate threat. <laughs> anyway, he moved. Okay, so let's put this on a dark square and play. I want to play the move f4 here to support my center pawn and also to make sure I don't get mated on the back rank. And uh, he's indirectly looking at my pawn here. I'm going to go ahead and play f4 anyway. He has no great tempo moves with the bishop, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, and, and, you know, it might have been more interesting if he tried to hold on to that blockade my pawn, right? He could have played bishop to a4 there. Would have won the pawn. Maybe he has other plans. Yeah, I guess, uh, I guess he's winning that pawn. Okay. Unless um, there's some trick with my rook here. But I really don't see it. If I push the pawn forward, he just gets his rook behind it. So what should I do? Yeah, bring my king forward and um, get my rook onto the c-file. That's a better, a better location for the rook than where it was. And uh, let's activate the bishop. I don't know what the bishop is attacking. He's got a lot of pawns on light squares, but they're, they're well protected at the moment. So I need to... Let's see, bishop here s slows down these pawns. So how do I get counterplay? I guess I need to get counterplay by... The way to get counterplay is to push the uh, kingside pawns. Although he is, he is well set up here to defend against that. So rook here. Bishop takes, rook takes. 
Rook takes pawn push. I get the rook behind. All right. So his idea is just to uh, go there. I see. So let's see. Bishop here. And he pushes the pawn. I take the rook. <laughs> he pushes the pawn and queens. <laughs> That's pretty good. So bishop here. And uh, he pushes the pawn. What do I do? I can get my rook behind the pawn, but then he takes my bishop. I take the pawn. I've got a pawn for a bishop. Hmm, not, not very appealing. Is there another plan here? Yeah, it was a nice tactic, just pushing the pawn after I take that one. So, or putting my rook in front here. He takes the bishop. Um, that, I just lose the bishop anyway. So, bishop there. <clears throat> oh, he can take with his bishop. That's unfortunate. Okay, I'm going to resign here. Good game. White I will uh, upload this into a postmortem. See you guys later. Bye.